Sam, you must have uh, you must pay for YouTube because you got to skip. There's no ad for you. Same with you, Jeff. Hey, Bob, you probably have it too because you're always the first on. <laughs> hey, jump, San Francisco. I won't live stream next week, uh, the day after Christmas, um, but I should be able to do the day after New Year's, so. I think the Rose Parade is on the Monday, because I don't think they ever have the Rose Parade on Sunday, if I remember. We used to live, hey, Brad, we used to live, we used to live, um, well, obviously, two and a half blocks south of the parade route in Pasadena. So we would walk up. You, we could walk up. Like, we'd watch the parade start on TV, and then we would walk up eh, maybe a half hour later, 45 minutes later, and it would be just showing up on our block. But we wouldn't have chairs or anything. There'd be billions of people out there. But I could stand, you know, you could stand behind people and see everything fine because the floats were over everybody's head. But... Um, for many years, we watched Chairs uh, for Friends. I should say Beth watched Chairs for Friends. <laughs> but everybody took a couple hour turn out there so Beth could get a get a break. But yeah, she was a trooper going out there and watching, you know, uh, we probably, the most we ever had was 20 chairs, maybe 30 chairs. You kind of have to, you have to set them up. You have to claim, you stake your claim. You have to set them up. You have to move them out at the right time. I think at midnight, you can move them onto the street. Or something like that. I can't remember what time it was, but people are always trying to get in front of you and stuff. It's like they showed up one minute before midnight and they're trying to get in front of you, and you've been there for you know like 15 hours already. <laughs> it's like, oh heck no. <laughs> so we always made sure we had plenty of bodies at that moment, you know. It is funny though. It is funny how people will just show up and like try to get in front of you so they can have a front row, and it's like, yeah, no. Um, that's weird, Sam. Yeah, that's that's odd. Check your check your uh, credit card statement. Maybe you're paying and you don't realize. <laughs> uh, foggy today. Well, big surprise there, Jump. <laughs> you live in San Francisco, <laughs> isn't it? Always when it was a John uh, Mark Twain said uh, the the coldest day I ever spent was summer in San Francisco, summer day in San Francisco, or something like that. And I remember that. I've been, I went on a one of those cruises on the on the San Francisco the Bay or whatever it's called. And I mean, I it was summer, but and so I didn't wasn't thinking, and everybody on the boat was freezing. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're gonna keep talking about chord embellishments, fills and riffs, things like that. We're gonna start tackling some minor chords. Uh, the previous two videos I talked about basically the five. Um, Kind of beginning chords of the caged method c we did a we did d did g and e <laughs> not in that order um i probably went circle of fifth so i probably went c g d a e um i i don't know may just start on e minor today but probably hit like e minor a minor d minor uh we could do b minor so the, the relative minor keys to the to g the, like c would be a minor g's relative minor is e minor um, D's relative minor is B minor, um, and we could maybe hit that one. Um, I can also show you some cheater chords for B minor, so you don't have to do a bar uh, that I, that I use all the time. Um, it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to talk about that. Um, there's, uh, let's see, the so D to B, so A F sharp minor, and then E would be C sharp minor. Well, really, we probably we may not do probably won't do C sharp minor, but we'll do like D minor, which is the the, the minor substitution, the relative minor for the key of F. And we'll talk about um, probably some pentatonic shapes because um, I think it's really easy to see. I think it's easy to see the the pentatonic shapes around the major chords too. We didn't really talk so much about that, but when it comes to coming up with riffs over minor chords, I think it's really helpful to kind of be able to see the the um, pentatonic scales that are wrapping around the chords. 
I mean, for example, when you play an E minor chord, you know, right there you're playing 50% of the notes in the E minor pentatonic. So you've already got half of the scale right there. You just need to learn the other notes. And I got a little bit of a cold or something because I woke up this morning feeling kind of like garbage. Didn't didn't sleep well last night, so I got up and was like, oh, you know, kind of like just felt dry and like just thirsty and you know, not achy or anything, no cough, nothing, just kind of like, oh, what's going on? Like a sign, of, like like an allergy. It may be allergies because it's it stopped raining, so now it's still cold, but. You know, usually it gets rain, it kind of tamps everything down, and then as soon as everything kind of dries out, it starts kicking out stuff. So maybe I've got allergies. I don't know. I've never had any tests to that end. So uh, any questions here? I filmed another video, I think, on Friday. Uh, I did another one of those um, jazz chords in Dadgat. So I'm working on it. It takes a long time to do all the, the chord diagrams. So I'm working on that. I'm probably about a third of the way done with the chord diagrams. Once I do that, then I'll post it pretty much. I'm not going to try to time it to like, oh, the best time to drop a video is noon on Thursday. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to drop it when I drop when I'm finished with it, um, you know, or I'll, I'll make it drop the like the next day at 9 a.m. or something like that. So it hits at noon on the East Coast and before dinner in, in, in England. Um, you know, most of my my top countries are the ones you would expect. Let me see. Let me look that up. It's been a while since I've actually looked at that. We'll look at it together here. Um, but, you know, YouTube is phenomenal with analytics. They just give you a lot of information. So it, it makes, my view counts are down, so my revenue is going to be down a little bit. Because um, I'm not dropping a lot of videos. Um, and maybe... Um, Maybe I'll um, do another live stream, you know, Christmas Day. Christmas Day might actually be more likely than uh, the day after Christmas. I can't. I've, you know, I've, got, I've got to take Beth to the airport and stuff like that. And I've got a lot of work coming up. In fact, I've got a, I've got a meeting after, the, after we're done here. And then I'm supposed to do a songwriting session after that meeting today. So um, let's see. What am I looking for? Analytics. Here we go. All right, audience. Top geographies. Let's see, all right. So, uh, number one is, of course, the United States. Number two would be what? Who do you think number two would be? seen any surprises here maybe a little bit you know not really seen any surprises here but we're getting down pretty low percentages here I mean 51 percent is the U United States Edmonton Canada well you know what Canada is on the top five so anybody guess who number two is <laughs> you can probably infer that it's not Canada so that pretty much tells you and the lag here, I think it's, you guys are 30 seconds behind me. Yes, you missed, missed everything, Sam. Everything. We've been talking about Michigan Un University football the entire time. <laughs> and Greek music. Bala Balalaikas. Wait a minute, that's not Greek. <laughs> Bazooki, sorry. Uh. I'll do my best to offend everybody. I'm an equal opportunity offender like South Park. Yes, it's the UK. Nobody said it, but that's, I think. Uh, but UK is number two, then Canada is number three, and Australia is number four. So the, the top English-speaking countries. <laughs> when, when I meet somebody that speaks multiple languages, I usually say I don't speak any languages. Um, but... Uh, yeah, and then the first non-English speaking country, for the most part, is Germany, which makes sense because it's a very large country. Um, then India, and India actually, I think in Germany, almost ever, you know, most people speak English. Um, that's, that's an American talking. Yeah, you speak my language, right? <laughs> in India, I know almost all the calls I get are from India, so I know they speak English. France, 
you know, in Paris they speak English, even whether they want to admit it or not. Uh, the Netherlands, Philippines. Oh, thank you, Matt. Matthew. You're awesome. Um, the Philippines, which it's a big country, so it makes sense. But we're talking here. We're talking 0.8 percent, so it's a very small percentage. Uh, but of the last views of the last 28 days, it's you know 786 views, so that's not too bad. Uh, New Zealand's kind of up there. So it's, well, Ireland is own, its own, okay, but Ireland's a fairly small country. So the Philippines, Spain, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, Sweden, Indonesia, big country. South Africa, they do speak English there. Um, that's cool. Hi, South Africa. Brazil. Now, as far as who's watching this, the live stream, um, it, you know, Canada and U.S., very common, and then I get a lot of uh, Europe. Europe, but boy, it's tough if you're in Australia to catch the live stream live uh, because it's what time is it in Australia right now? Like Sydney. My stepbrother lives in Sydney. So that's the, oh, I can see cities? What? Interesting. Huh. The number one city for my views. And now we're talking percent, small percentages, so like 0.3%. So, but they, so they break it up into cities. I'd never noticed this before. And I can see they, they actually have it on a chart here. Number one city is London. Isn't that interesting? Number two is New York. Hey, New York. <laughs> Sydney and Melbourne. So, and then Chicago. So of the top five cities, only two of them are U.S. Then, wow, and then Los Angeles, Brisbane, Seattle, Toronto. But just by its nature, when you add up all the U.S. ones, it probably comes to. Now, this is not, this is for the last 28 days. Okay, so there's, yeah, so for every New York City, there may be 10 times that many people watching in New York State. So um, I feel like people living in cities are busier. It's probably a, a, I live in a city, and that's probably a prejudicial statement. I mean, I used to live, I never lived in the country. I never lived, I mean, technically, in a, lived in the suburbs, but in Indiana, I lived in Indianapolis, which is the biggest city of Indiana, so... Hey, pink elephants, what's going on? Your, Yorkshire, Yorkshire, yeah, tea time here, perfect. <laughs> uh, do you uh, add some cream? I, I like tea. I like tea with cream, so I'm definitely get in touch with my English roots. Uh, I was rooting for France uh, because I'm a quarter French. My great, my grandfather's parents were from Alsace Lorraine. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm an equal opportunity offender. All sounds all wrong. Strasbourg, which is funny because it's they it's actually a Fran France, but they speak German for the most part in that part. It's a very 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 eastern part of France that touches Germany, so it's like it might as well be Germany. It's a beautiful city. I've never been there, but it's on it's on my list. I don't think we'll do Beth and I are trying to decide where to go next year if we're going to go anywhere. COVID's kind of kept us from doing too much traveling. Not because we're afraid, it's just I'm not vaccinated. So um, I never, no one ever asked me to. <laughs> so I just, because I, I'm just here by myself all day. No, no one cares. So, but they had some restrictions like Canada. I couldn't, even, I couldn't go to Canada. Now I can, but I don't know that I would. I'd be afraid I'd get stuck there. <laughs> I have a very good friend in Canada. Sometimes he checks in. Andrew uh, Gerard, phenomenally. He's a. He's a. I've talked about him before. He's definitely what you would call. Um, come here. This it kind of blanches out. The is that better? I don't know. I'm sick as a lock. It's a pretty bright room. I've got the windows closed, and it's still this bright. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, the aperture on the cameras. I think. I think set too sensitive. But I don't know how to change it. But. Um, it's a webcam. I don't know. I don't even know if I, I'm sure I have software for it, but I'm not opening that software. I'm running it through OBS. Um, but yeah, he's he's like a Renaissance man. I would call him because he, he just he's had so many different careers. He even had a show in Vegas where he would hypnotize a hundred people on stage at the same time. <laughs> and Chris Angel saw him and loved the show and then hired him to produce uh, Mind Freak. So he. Then became like a TV producer, and he produced, produced and created show. Uh, um, I he he started following me on YouTube. I met him through YouTube, and um, 
he reached out to me and we did some songwriting. I played on his record, and uh, so he's also a guitarist and an artist, songwriter. Actually, a really good guitar player. Um, and he's also, he, he was, a, he, like, his, I think his first gig was hair salon. He worked at a hair salon cutting hair. And he's a, he's a photographer, professional photographer. I mean, it's like one of the, it's like, I, you know, he's good at everything he does. So, anyway, I don't know. Andrew, if you're watching, hey. <laughs> Say something in, uh. Uh, uh, Sam said, well, no one could go, can't, yeah. 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 It was, yeah, you're up there, Sam, so you know. You saw it for, you were in the front row for that. I, yeah, right now I can't tell, Sam. That's what I was saying. I can't tell what viewers, everybody's from um, here. But, okay, so. I've chit chatted long enough. This is a long chit chat. Sorry, Bruce. Uh, so we're, we're what? How many? How far into this lesson? And I'm actually going to start talking about guitar. Uh, we're 16 minutes in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I said, I woke up. I'm not feeling very good. So I, I'm kind of. I took some cold meds just because whatever it is if that helps. And yeah, Detroit is north of some of Canada. My daughter's in Spokane. It's cold as can well. It's cold as southern Canada. Holy cow! It's cold up there. Um, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about the E minor chord, and I'll show you that pentatonic scale that lays perfectly on top of it, and we can practice that together. But the classic E minor scale is open two two open open open, and I'll show you some variations on this that you can use. So let's say a fictitious progression like E minor. Or something playing something like that. So, what kind of things can we do maybe in that context um, over that, that E minor? Now, if we we're jamming on doing E minor jam, is you know, you can kind of go crazy on it, but, but what if you're just on it for a second like that? Which is kind of more practical than just doing, doing an E minor vamp um that would that's you could put that in a song if you wanted but there's not many songs that just sit on one chord for very long uh, they do but not that many uh, so now one thing you can do is you can take off your you can take off your s third finger and just have the middle finger which i won't isolate because i want to keep this pg-13 um and that would be an e minor seven chord so zero two zero 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 Okay, so here's a trick you can do. If you if you want, you can just hit that low note and then hit the top four strings. Well, what does that sound like? If two songs come to mind, right? Right? But you could... But you hit the top four strings, you get a D, E minor seven. And um, basically, um, so the notes are going to be the same. It's going to be D, G, B, and E. So we have our seventh, our third, our fifth, and our root of the E minor. So don't worry. There won't be a quiz. There will not be a quiz on that. All right. So that could be, you could do that. You could also play, oh, and the other song is... From the beginning by Emerson Lincoln Palmer, and the other one was uh, kind of a roundabout by Yes, and it was one of those songs that everybody kind of had to learn in the 70s. Um, I probably taught it a few dozen times at least. Um, but you could also hit the at the fifth fret the harmonics. We need to talk about harmonics. I don't think we've done a lesson on harmonics. And you get you you don't put your finger in the fret. You put your finger above the fret wire. That's the point. Where it's and essentially what you're doing with harmonics is you're cutting the string into sections. When you do the harmonics at the 12th fret, technically, you're like, well, but the 24th fret's right here and the 36th fret's right here, and yeah, you know, well, technically, what you're doing is you're cutting the string in half. That's that's exactly the halfway point between the nut and the bridge, and so that creates a harmonic. It's, it's science, physics. Uh, somebody's probably going to talk about it there. If we cut the string in thirds, we're going to get 
those harmonics, which are a fifth up from these harmonics. And then if we do, we cut the string in quarters, we get this, these notes, and those are a, an octave above this harmonic, or two octaves above the open strings. Okay, so this would be an octave above the open strings. This would be an octave and a fifth above the open strings. This would be two octaves above the open strings. And then this, if you go to the fourth fret approximately, that would be uh, two octaves and a major third. Um, but we're not going to talk about that today. But so like you could you could imply an E minor seven chord this way or this way. So I've got. trying to, and I'm not doing a very good job of it, the key is to try to keep the groove going, to make sure you don't slow down or speed up even. I was actually more tempted to speed up because uh, I, I felt like there was too much empty space there. I'm not strumming as much, so. I'm subdividing here with a lot of 16th notes to kind of fill in the strum. And then I'm like, you know, I almost want to jump to that C chord too soon, uh, but that's me. Now, you could also do the harmonics at the 7th fret, and if you played the top five ones, okay, that's an interesting harmony. I could play that low E, and that kind of implies, see, there's no G in there, but I have a, it's the same as these notes right here, so, it's kind of cool, it's, you know, you might think of that as an E11 chord or a D over E, but you have an E, which is the root, you have a, an A, which is the fourth, you have a D, which is the seventh, you have a, an F sharp, which is that beautiful second, and then you have the the um, the B, which is the fifth, and you could do that. It's kind of cool. You wouldn't want to do that every time, but it's something you could throw in when you're a little bored. <laughs> When you, the guitar player, are bored, who cares what anybody else is thinking? Uh, missing the Wall of Wonders by a hair or two. <laughs> oh, behind me? All sorts of weird stuff up there. Not, on the wall tends to be nothing. The wall tends to be things that I don't have cases for. Although I do have a case for the Oud, but I don't have a case for that Epiphone. Uh, I don't have a case. Uh, I do have a case for that baritone. Actually, I remember paying. I had to buy a bass case for it. Uh, the bass six, I don't have a case for, but I could use that baritone case. Uh, you can see in the corner. They see the whamola. The heck is that? Yeah, it's getting pretty messy back there. It's really getting messy back there. Uh, did I put anything under the? I'm going to put something underneath and maybe above the YouTube award thing because a lot of the little instruments I have also don't have cases. Um, if that's what you're referring to, I don't know, Karsten, I don't know if you're referring to the Wall of Wonder back behind me, but, okay, so, I talked about the the second, okay, one way we can add the second, so again, go back to your minor, E minor chord that you, you know, generally, I mean, some people might play with these two fingers, but I play it like this, not because I might, but go to E major, that wouldn't happen, but, sometimes I'll play with these two fingers, like, if I'm going, or if I'm going between E minor and Playing uh, horse and gnome. You can do it either way. Um, but that did me with silence. Um, but if we add the ninth, if we add like if we're using our second and third finger, we add the ninth up here. Top, same, also the second fret, but the top string, E, high E string, a beautiful note. So we end up with E. Actually, it's not technically a minor ninth chord. It's a add nine, or an, a, I call it E minor two chord. So it's an E minor triad with the two added. Back in the day, in the 70s, I would say, uh, I would have written E minor add nine, but to, to save shorthand, I just called it E minor two. All right. Um, 
and there's no seventh in there. So an E minor ninth would be a seventh. The way you, I, I talk about, I uh, teach on um, chord symbol symbology, <laughs> it's like a religion. Um, e minor ninth, the way you can kind of think of that is if it's, you know, it says nine, it's every other, you know, one, three, five, seven, nine. So that would be, E minor ninth would be a five note chord technically. E minor 11 would be six notes, you know, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. E minor 13th, for example, would be, e, you know, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. So it would be everything from the every other note from the E to the to the ninth or E to the seventh. E minor seven would be one, three, five, seven. It'd be four notes. Um, you can pretty much take that to the bank. Now, the problem with E minor thirteenth is I said there's se uh, there's seven notes. We only have six strings, so you have to buy a seven string guitar to play that one chord, and you put it down, and you pick up the guitar to play the rest of the song. Now, generally, what you do in, in those scenarios is you start eliminating notes, and we've talked about that a lot. You can get rid of the fifth, you can get rid of the root if you have a bass player. Generally, in, in those 13th chords or even 11th chords, there's a note or two you don't want. Like in a 13th chord, you never put in an 11th. If you put an 11th, you know, you're probably going to call it an 11th chord, but um, generally, you're not putting an 11th in. So now we've gotten rid of the root, the fifth, and the, and the 11th on a 13th chord. Now we're down to four notes. So like, you know, A13... Because the reason you get rid of the root is you probably have a bass player. If you don't have a bass player, then you might you want might want the you might want the root. So anyway, that's the that's the symbology lesson. Um, but another way uh, I, I think is a really beautiful way you can play E minor or E minor at two or E minor add nine would be to go open first finger on the second fret and then put your third finger. You can if your hands are a little struggles with it you can put your pinky on it the fourth fret of the fourth string and then try to get that make sure that g string is open always want to have your g string open okay insert junior high laughter now um, and that's just beautiful because you get that you get that minor second rub the f sharp to the g which the f sharp is that nine or the two same thing I'm going to explain that I can, but yeah, that's why the E minor two, and then you get that uh, the um, uh, the third right there. So the, the the two and the three are half step apart. If I were playing E minor scale, you can see that. Now, but again, if you call it an E minor ninth, you need to have a seven in there because an E minor ninth implies one, three, five, seven, nine, not just one, three, five, nine. Okay. <clears throat> so if we want to add, take this chord, and make it an E minor nine, we put our second finger here and get that D note because we don't really need two Bs. So this one, uh, let me let me type it in here for you so you have it. You can. Oh, you know what? I didn't do the. Sorry, have you been yelling at me to do the, or did no one notice the Discord link? Um, I'm not really posting, I'm not really create right now creating, um, uh, diagrams. That's a weird little thing there. Many people, oh, we got 30 people, that's not bad. I, I feel like a lot of kids are off from school right now, so I'm going to pin this. So this is a Discord link, you can go there, everybody continues talking about stuff, guitars, and me. <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> um, and uh, But every, you know, any, anything, any JPEG or, or uh, um, shoot, what's it called? Uh, any paperwork I create for the live stream, I post in there under Tom's Lesson Plans PDFs. PDF, thank you. That's the word I couldn't think of. Hey, Simon, what's going on? Um, and so, um, that's it. Okay, so here's the E minor. Here's the E minor. I'll do the E minor second first. This is one voice. And this, you can, there's many ways you can do it. B zero two four zero zero zero. I love that chord. That's a beautiful chord. But if you want to hear the, you want to make it an E minor ninth. You can do this, but there's an easier one, and I'm going to show that to you in a second. So E M nine is E minor nine, and again that implies E. The three, the four, the five, and the nine. So we got it's, it's for E, three, five, seven, and nine. We have to have a five 
different notes in this chord. So it's going to be this one's going to be zero, two, four, zero, three, zero. So that might be a that might be a handful. Uh, if you get it down, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I got it down. Here's an easier one. Okay, remember we did um, we played E minor like standard, and then we added our pinky on the top note, and that made an E minor second. I'll write that out as another alternative for E minor two, E minor E M two, E minor two. So E M two. All right, zero two two zero zero two. Okay, that's one. Now, if you take off your third finger or make the D string open, you can use your third finger. That's also E, that's an E minor ninth. That has a, an E, a G, a B, a D, and an F sharp. We have two Bs in it, actually. So we have, um, so we have two fives, and, but all the other notes are in there. So we have, for that one, it's E minor nine. You can call it E minor ninth, and that's open, two, open, 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 two. Like that. What commercial was that? Coles or... Or the lady stands at the door going, open, open, open. Every time I say open, 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 I always think of that stupid commercial. <laughs> it's a good commercial. It's a phenomenal, if I still remember it, the ad agency did their freaking job. <laughs> it's like I still, my kids still love the, the Quizno subs commercial with that mangy rat. <laughs> and it didn't, the, the ad campaign didn't last long because it's like, I think they didn't want to associate like a mangy rat with their food or something, but... Uh, they fired the, those guys, and I think they went on to something, do some amazing stuff. Every now and then, I'll see a commercial. I go, "Oh, those are the. That's got to be done by the Quiznos guys." <laughs> I should do some research on that. E add nine, yeah. E add nine would be, or E two would be that. So I'm playing an E chord major. We may have talked about this last week when I talked on the E chord. That's a tough chord. Um, is there a cheetah version of that? It's not that's no there's no third in this one. so this one would work like minor or major yeah I don't know I'm trying I'll have to think well yeah you could do like E and an F another video drop hopefully this week I've got a very busy week um, I'm working on a, on a lot of things right now and then I just got a, a, a text right before I went live saying hey can you have a phone conversation today about uh, the Lifetime movie that I'm working on and, and um, I was like sure so we'll see when it when it uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll it'll fit into my schedule okay so E minor all right, so let's look at this pentatonic scale that lays right on top of this. It's our open pentatonic. It, um, it, we used it a lot when we were doing bluegrass because in G, we use that. It's basically that pentatonic. So we're gonna start with open E string, then third fret. I'd use your third finger, that's fine. It makes the most sense. And then open A string, and then second fret. Open, second fret, open G string. 2nd fret on the G string, open B string, 3rd fret, open, oh nice, 30, 39, great. I think it's because Christmas break, everybody's home. So hey youngins. <laughs> okay, so let's do that, I'll, I'll go backwards, we'll get it going backwards too. 3, 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, okay? So you can just kind of visualize, everything's open. All those, that's, if you just play the, all six strings open, you've got 50% of the scale right there, boom, okay? So what you need to do is just remember these six notes, which if you play them all at once, it makes a beautiful, um, it's, this is technically a G six nine chord. So it's got a G, a B, which is the third, there's the sixth, F sharp, there's the ninth or the second, which is A, and there's the fifth, and the, but there's no seventh in here. This is like a good Elvis chord. You know, if you were to play like. Be a, a great way to end an Elvis song. And a lot of Elvis songs ended this way. What's up for Christmas, Pastor? <laughs> well, I got, I got, what do we have? Four, we have four Christmas Eve services. So, yeah, so that's what's up, but I'm not a pastor. Okay, so let's play that scale again. 
because we'll be able to do a lot of, this comes in that area of chord embellishments, but also riffs. And here's the other thing, I want to show you the next pentatonic scale, because <clears throat> the next one up the fretboard, because that's going to um, help us create some cool licks, okay? Some cool riffs and fills. All right, so again, here we go, E minor, and then we're going to E minor pentatonic is E, A, or I'm sorry, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, G, E, sorry, B, D, E, G, okay? So, um, so again, oh, one, let's see, zero, three, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, three, zero, three. Three zero three zero. You're probably really familiar with this one. It's the first pentatonic scale everybody learns. Okay, so pentatonic. And, and I, thusly, I call that pentatonic number one. I call it that. That's not an official uh, nomenclature uh, terminology at all. But so if that's pentatonic number one. The next pentatonic up the up the fretboard would be pentatonic number two. So that's what I want to show you. What I call pentatonic number two. Okay. So you might want to start to see some of these notes, um, but. Okay, I'm going to tell you the trick right now. The, remember I said, okay, if you play all open strings, that's 50% that's of the pentatonic scale. Um, for the next one, if you play the notes that you tuned to, like when you first learned to tune the guitar, and the only one you have to really remember is this one, because you're not tuning that string, just the fictional string at the bottom of the guitar here. Um, but if you do, if you uh, visualize those notes, now you have, you've already memorized the, these six notes, right? For the six nine chord for Elvis. Um, now we have this chord, which I can't play with one hand. But if you do that, then you add those two together and you get pentatonic number two. So we're at the third fret, fifth fret, second fret, fifth fret, second fret, fifth fret, second fret, fourth fret, third fret, fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret. And you notice I kind of moved my hand up. It doesn't matter. You can play it if you want to work out your pinky and everything. Get that Christmas tree set up. You put me on in the background. Put the decorations on. So this is pentatonic number two. All right. Now the reason I want you to know that one or see that one, I, it's not so much I want you to see that scale. The the pentatonic number one, I would totally want you to visualize that because we can. I'm just playing pentatonic number one licks. I'm trying to keep that chord going. better um, as a guitar player as an improviser usually if you're gonna do these little riffs and fills what I would do is I would work them out so that you know that at this point of the song song a you're gonna do this fill this lick or whatever so that you you kind of uh, it sounds like you know to the audience who's only hearing the song for the first time maybe uh, it sounds like to them that you're improvising something but I call it sponta uh, spontaneous improv or spun spontaneous planning or something like that the planning is in in the it sounds spontaneous but you've really planned it plan spontaneity that's what i meant to say so uh yeah so you 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 the uh, uh you you basically it makes you sound like you're being spontaneous and improv improvisational but you're really not you've worked these you've baked these riffs into the song and i think if gary were here he probably has things like that he does when he performs live where it's like, oh yeah, I always do this one lick or something when I do this song. And that's that's kind of what I'm talking about. You can find one or two or three licks out of this these lessons. It's probably really great. Now here's the reason I wanted you to learn the notes, at least the top notes up here of pentatonic number two. Again, my name, my terminology. 
um, is so you can do licks like this. So an E minor. I'm sliding up, and now I'm actually sliding up because the E minor chord is all these open strings. Um, I'm sliding up to the tuning note. So do that with me, go. So I, I'm hitting the A note, uh, so I'm hitting the third string and the second string at the same time, and I'm sliding up. You can hit, but however you want to do it, come back, but going up, you're hitting two notes, and you're creating this kind of dissonance that... That's the first, that's chopsticks. Everybody learns that in, in, uh, in piano. You feel like, I'm feeling like the who and who, but, oh, Gary's here. <laughs> you know, because you're listening in. <laughs> okay. So, so, but when you create that, that major second, it's not quite as, dis it's not quite as dissonant as that minor second that's part of that E minor nine chord or E minor second chord. Um, but it still creates a little bit of tension, which gets resolved when you slide that A note up to B, and now you have two Bs. To B or not to B. This is to B, and this is not to B. Not to B to to B. I did the same thing, but I started on the, the D note, split up to the E, so I'm hit, hit two strings. I'm hitting the, the third fret on the second string and the open E string, and I'm sliding up to that tuning note, the fifth fret of the third second string. You can do it on every one of the strings. kind of creates a fun lick, but even if you just do... You just hit. It's cool. It's just. It's. It's again. It's. It's a very guitar esque kind of thing to do, and that's. You really want to use as many of those guitar things you can do because it's. That's the kind of thing that a piano player can't do. I mean, they can go, but they can't play two two of the same notes at the same time. We could do three. I've done that before, where I wanted. When I wanted like a one note ostinato or something. Three unisons to three halves, semitones. Okay, three whole steps. Yeah, it's a good exercise. If I did three minor, three major. Let's see. No, that's that's a minor. That's a minor. That's a minor. Three majors. What would that look like? Automatic chord, of course, duh. So you can take that that <laughs> So I went from three unisons. This has nothing to do with anything to three semitones to three whole steps to three minor thirds to three major thirds. And here's how you, you can see what happens here. On the second string, I'm going down one fret at a time. On the third string, I'm going two frets at a time. I'm, basically, I'm doing that on that on the third string, and on the and increase that. Yeah, make your friends with this. <laughs> a perfect fourth would be. Uh, Try to do that. So anyway, holy cow, what a waste of time that was. That was completely wasted time.
<laughs> be funny if I, I have to cut that part out because it's a song somewhere. I'm like, <laughs> if somebody wrote a song around that. That would be a challenge to try to write a song. I think you, the, the cool thing is you can make them a one note melody, like a John, John Lennon melody. <laughs> Gary is a singer. Oh, what, what are we talking? Oh, see, how high do you keep your action on the this type of? Thing? Um, you know, I, it's just comfortable height. It's not. I don't super. Low. If you get too low on your action, it, it, you tend to get too many buzzes. Probably the older I get, the, the more I like low action. Or lowish accent, action. But you have to be careful because if your action's too low, it'll rob you of your tone. It, I've noticed that a little bit higher action gives you a better tone and less buzzing, less spreading out, things like that. Okay, so let's, let's just review those unison notes that we can get to. So... Right now, I'm just taking my third finger. I'm sliding from the, the third fret to the fifth fret. Where I can go. Okay, so I'm kind of visualizing both the E minor pentatonic number one and pentatonic number two. There. Okay, I can do the same thing. Okay, but it's different notes, obviously. Uh, but it's the same kind of sound. I'm getting up to that unison thing, the two Bs. That sounds really good. That's a very guitar-esque thing to do. You want to you want to bank on some of those things because that's what makes the you know you don't want your guitar to sound like a piano. And then here, and if you want to do the, um, you could slide up from the E, the second fret, up to the fifth fret. Or you could even do the minor. That sounds really cool, you know. It's also that works great over the G chord too. A lot of the licks over the G chord will work over the E minor chord because it's the relative minor, meaning um, in the key of G, the sixth chord is E minor, and that's a substitution. All right, we've talked about this before. We talked about this in songwriting. All right, so I can substitute E minor for G sometimes. You don't want to do it too often, but let's say you're playing a song that's like. I can play E minor instead of G because there's two notes in common out of the out of the triads. The three note triads, there's two notes uh, common, the G and the B are in both of those chords. So it, it, whatever you sing over G, you should be able to sing no problem over E minor and vice versa. If the song were... I could technically sub... Or even reverse those E minor and G chord and you wouldn't have to change the melody at all. I could... change the melody at all to accommodate those substitutions that I did two in that one progression instead of going I went E C G D and then I went G C E minor D so um, and when I said E earlier I meant E minor okay oh I thought it said whiskey Gary whistling Gary Yeah, so check out Gary's, uh, you can check out Gary's YouTube channel and you can see, you, you record a lot of your performances, right? 
and you record songs just to put post them up. Some original, mostly mostly covers, or what's the what's your cover to original ratio? Now, right now, what I'm doing with what I'm doing is I'm without even thinking, I'm just doing. I'm playing every, every other note of, of the pentatonic number one, number two shape. Okay, just kind of get my hands around it, and I'm doing every other. So it's kind of like instead of playing it straight up and down. Playing first note, then the second note, then the third note, then the fourth note, then the fifth note, then the sixth note. I'm playing the first note, then the third note, then the second note, then the fourth note, and then the third note, and the fifth note, and the fourth note, and the sixth note. It's, it's creating a little pattern. It's good for the right hand, the picking thing. And so there's a riff, riff we can do. Let's do this one. I like this one a lot. Over E minor. Instead of sliding up to that tuning note to G and hitting two Gs, I'm sliding up to the, the second. Okay? Now this, here's, with the major chords, we had a little bit more leeway with adding the substitutions, or I'm sorry, the suspended tones. Uh, like if we're in the key of G, all right, the, the G chord has a sus4. The five chord has a sus4, but the C chord would be a, a sharp four if you wanted to stay in key. You could use the sus4 over the C chord, but you're going out of the key of G to do that. Generally, it, when you do that, you're creating almost a different vibe, and you want to make sure, is that vibe okay? It's going to kind of create a pseudo blues Maybe a country rock or um, or even a gospely kind of sound to go to that suspended chord on the four chord, okay? To go to that sus four. So, for example, if I so let's so let's see. Right now, if I were only hear that much of that song, I might assume the song was in the key of C and it was starting on the the three chord, but I'm. I can still make that assumption here with the G chord. But once I get to that D major chord, I'm like, wait a minute, we're not in the key of C, we're definitely in the key of G. Okay, so that those kind of susses that may kind of work on, you know, for sure work on some of the chords in the progression, and but kind of works on some other chords in the progression is, progression is, um, uh, is is kind of okay over major chords. Minor chords don't give you that same kind of luxury. Like I can't add a minor ninth to every minor. There's three minor chords in a in a key in a major key, um, and so technically in this in this progression we're in the key of G, G E minor. Or you can think we're in key B minor. That's fine. the ninth there. Okay, that's the E minor. The the uh, the two chord in the key is A minor. And then the the B minor chord is, is technically the three chord. So I could use the you know I could use the B minor as a sub for the D maybe. It's a really beautiful sound. I love that one. Again that's the minor substitution. The, the, Go down a minor third, and in the same key D, D and B minor share two notes in common. So the, anything you sing over D should work over the B minor. However, we don't necessarily that second isn't isn't going to fly. Not that you would play that, <laughs> but if you see, there's no C sharp in the key of G, so that's gonna that's a, almost a no can do. takes it to a different place um, and so a pure B minor would be fine there you, but um, but if you were soloing over I definitely would kind of avoid that C sharp even though normally over B minor you might want to go you know that that ninth sounds so good over the minor chord 
But in the key of G, the, the, the B minor doesn't have that. It would be a, a C instead of a C sharp. <laughs> it just goes, it goes in a completely different direction. So you don't really want to, you don't want to use the ninth over the, the three chord generally. But over the, the six chord, which is E minor, and over the two chord, which is A minor, yeah, go for it. And so this lick that... I love that lick. So what I'm doing is I got the E minor here chord going here. And I take that third note and I'm playing, I'm playing the, the two middle strings. So I've got the, the D string with the fret of the, the second fret. And I'm, I'm playing the G string at the same time open. And I'm sliding up from the, the E to the F sharp. So now I'm sliding from, I'm making this a minor second, a minor third to a minor second. And there's the distance. And then I'm just double hitting at that point. I could even just hit the low note, the high note on that. I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily trying to hit both of us. And then slide back and then hit up that open D because all the open strings are good in E minor. You can. Let me show you that one. So what I'm doing there is I'm hitting the, the D string and the G string. Again, part of the reason you hit two strings or more, you know, is to keep the rhythm going. It, it, it's it's kind of the difference between fills and riffs, right? A riff might be um, so. So what a riff there? And this is these these are not hard and fast terms or rules or anything like that. Just kind of in my head how I think of them. A fill is more of like a planned out, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, riff is more of a planned out thing, like. <laughs> I almost like that better. Um, but. That's almost like a riff is, is like part of the song. It's, it's part of the planning or the writing of the song. It's going to be there every time. It's. It's not something you can kind of um, leave in one time and, and, and put in another time, or leave out the, another time you know, that you play the song. You know, people are expecting to hear the riff or whatever, the, the hook. You might, might use the term hook for riff also, and I'm, I may be conf conflating these terms, you know, combining these terms somewhat. But the fill thing, the fill is more like, let's keep the song going, let's keep your rhythm going. So when I think of a fill, I'm wanting to put it in there um, in the midst of the, of the strumming pattern and keep the keep it keep everything going So if I can kind of keep that strumming thing going at the same time as doing a fill Then I'm hitting two strings or so every creates more of a harmony you're playing if you're playing two or three notes when you're doing your riff it's more like you're keeping the harmony going the 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 underpinning of the song going so the subtle difference almost that the the, the riff one is more like you pause and here's the riff kind of thing string second fret. And I'm just going right down the pentatonic here. But I'm trying to hit this is a very Jimi Hendrix thing to do. Jimi Hendrix was he was he was the fill maniac, right? So he would play he was like soloing and playing rhythm at the same time. That's kind of what we're talking about. Okay. This is gold. This is money right here, man. <laughs> hey Wendy, what's going on? Long to I'm at a distance looking at scales and thinking I'm gonna learn them next. Okay. That's a great, yeah, scales are great to learn. Um, you know, what I would do if you're learning a scale, like, you know, 
that's a basic E minor pentatonic. Um, I would also try to maybe try to do something melodic with it. Don't just play, you know. I mean, that's good dexterity to have and have it. Basically, what you want to do is you want, I, I, as I say, I think Carl Verheyen said this to me. Get it under your fingers. Um, you want to get the, the the scales so much under your fingers uh, that the second issue you don't have to think about them. And then when that happens, then things like this. Like the song's taking a pause. But I'm trying to keep the song in time. If I wanted to make it more of a Jimi Hendrix thing, you know, um, uh, and make it more of a Philly, Phil kind of thing, like a Philadelphia thing, you know, Philly, Philly, anyway, um, then I would try to be a little messier with it, okay? A little less intentional with my right hand. Because all of these strings are going to, all these things are going to be good. All these open strings are good. That's the beauty of playing this song in this key, is you can do that. Um, but if I were to, you know, um, what did I do? What did I do? I can't remember what I did. Well, let me rewind the tape. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, something like that. You know, I'm trying to come up with like a four beat lick. So there's one, two, three, four. But if I were to do a little, not, when I say sloppier, I don't mean like mess up the notes, but with your right hand, don't be so precise. Go ahead and hit a few extra strings. The difference I feel a little bit between a riff and a fill. A fill would kind of, again, you can't quote me on this because these are not hard and fast terms. Somebody else might call it a, a riff, a, a fill, and a fill a riff. But, but if I, if I hit some extra strings in there, um, then it it keeps that harmony. Right? If I'm doing a lick, I'm only hearing the root and the seventh, and I'm hearing the fifth, and I'm hearing the fourth, and I'm hearing the third. But if I'm hitting, I'm hearing a little bit more notes in there, two or three, you know, one or two extra notes, um, then you're, you're keeping that E minor tonality going. And so if something's happening right there vocally, it, it will, won't be like, oh, this is, oh wait, I should stop singing so we can listen to Tom play guitar. Which is what? You no, know, it's, it's more like you just fill in. Right? Because it's like. Right? That's Hendrix right there. That's a voodoo child. Um, he says, you know, like this. Listen, listen to how often he hits multiple strings. See, too many people go, no, that doesn't sound at all like Hendrix. Hendrix, he's not, like I said, he's not necessarily being sloppy. It's not, when I say sloppy, I just, I just mean less intentional with your right hand in particular. He's not sloppy. Although when I was a kid, I, when I first started him, I thought he was kind of sloppy. Um, sound like Hendrix you know learn your pentatonic scales on top of the chords but he's hitting multiple strings it's not it's not that it's like he's because in in his bands he was a trio he was the only he was the rhythm instrument and the solo instrument Uh, well, yeah, I can answer. Uh, 
the 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 gin the gin the gin i'm guessing gin call you gin um well no it depends you can totally learn any the, the, they're tuned the same um they feel a little different like a classical guitar is a little wider neck so if you have small hands it might be harder to play if you got big fat fingers a lot of times i suggest uh getting a nylon guitar or a classical guitar uh, because a little bit easier and there are some guitars like I have a Gibson uh, folk singer which has like a classical guitar neck on it um, I don't think it ever was intended to use nylon strings I think it's always been intended to use steel strings now you might not want to put steel strings on a nylon guitar I don't know what the tensions are regarding the bridge so that might not be advisable um, yeah 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 it's just what I heard because I was sitting you know when I was learning jazz scales, you know, I'm like, and then Hendrix would be like, you know, you know he would, he would, uh, that was my imitation of Hendrix or something. He'd be like, <laughs> it's like, why is he, why is he hitting somebody? No, be, be precise. No, that's, he was doing that because he wanted to keep the, the harmony and the groove and everything going. Cause he was being the rhythm. He was a rhythm guitar player and a lead guitar player at the same time. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, phenomenal at that. Okay, back to back to Jin's song, uh, question. So, yeah, now if you want to study classical guitar versus like the quintessential acoustic guitar, acoustic guitar has a lot of genres. So you couldn't just say I'm going to study acoustic guitar and and say that means I'm going to learn Bob Dylan songs and I'm going to learn. Um, oh, you know, I, I can't think of any of those guys' names, the two-handed stuff, you know, whatever. Those are two totally different styles of playing, you know, where you got the guys that are doing... <laughs> and that's my version of those guys. <laughs> um, but acoustic guitar, yeah, you can learn any song that you... you that any classic song was played on, um, you know, even like we were, I was just playing... Classic song by Yes called Roundabout. You can totally play that on a classical guitar. Um, and the the cool thing is everything you learn on a classical guitar, as long as you, your standard tuning, which is E A D G B E, um, will transfer to an electric guitar, an acoustic steel string guitar. It doesn't matter uh, because they're all three tuned the same, or a twelve string also. Um, so yeah, go ahead and learn what you can on the classical. You, whatever you have, you you make do with. They're, they're kids that learned how to play guitar on two string guitars, and then they you know, transition from there. But yeah, everything you learn on a, um, uh, oh, thank you, Christopher. Um, everything you learn on a, a, on the guitar should transfer. Um, and you know, I, acoustic guitar is a little harder to play than maybe nylon, although the strings, the fretboard's wider, so that may be more of a challenge. Um, and an electric guitar is probably the easiest of the three. So if you start on acoustic, you might steel string, you might find that your fingers are a little bit stronger. When you go to electric, you're like, oh, this is a lot easier to play. Um, and the same thing's too with nylon. When you start on nylon and you go, oh, wow, okay, this is a challenge, but I, I got it down. You go to pick up an electric guitar, and you might go, wow, okay, this is a little bit easier to play. It's not a lot easier to play. Um, but in, in nylon guitar, classical guitar, same thing, okay? You, you could learn classical repertoire, which, you know, which I can do on a steel string guitar. It doesn't matter. I can do it on an electric guitar. That doesn't matter. Um, but it's, it's, you know, designed, people expect to hear a classical guitar play classical music in that context. And flamenco guitar. Rescuados faster. I work on them every day, though. I'm getting—they're getting better. Um, yeah, the, the learning process again. It depends on the style. Um, uh, it depends on the style. Classical guitar is a is a discipline. Like when I when 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 you say. 
uh, classical guitar, when I, when I say classical guitar, I mean the study of classical music on guitar. Like you're learning Bach and Beethoven and all the guitar greats, the Torega, and not learning Beethoven. There's no Beethoven for guitar. He never wrote for guitar. But, but you know, Torega and Rodrigo or whatever. Uh, Via Lobos, I really like. Via Lobos has some great. Let's see, where's my. There's my. I have my flamenco behind me, but. Um, the uh, Via Lobos has some great pieces. Um, when I say classical guitar music, that's what I'm talking about. And yes, that's a very different discipline, you know, to, to just learning how to play guitar for campfire songs and, you know, learning like pop songs. I don't know whether it's, it's you know, uh, Charlie Puth songs on acoustic guitar. You know, a lot of times these songs are four chord songs. So you can kind of... can almost play there's there's kind of videos out there about how you can play the same you can play like 500 songs with the same chord progression so if you learn just a few chords on acoustic guitar you can kind of have some fun with it and entertain friends you can even start songwriting uh it's it doesn't take a whole lot to get up to speed on on uh a basic acoustic guitar type songs okay if that helps so again it's two totally different disciplines classical guitar um and you know Far more difficult than just learning four chord. Obviously, it sound you know I'm making it sound easy to play basic acoustic guitar, but it's not easy to study classical guitar. That's a, that's a discipline, and you'll find yourself if you study it. You go to college, they're going to give you about eight hours a day of work to do. <laughs> that's why, that's not why I'm not doing it. I didn't have a problem with practicing eight hours a day. My, the reason I didn't go down that path professionally was because my memory is just not great for. I could sight read almost anything, but to memorize 11 pages of a Bach Chacon, oh my goodness, it's just a ton of work. But very satisfying if you get it down. And I've seen guys perform it live, and I'm just like, I'm amazed. You know, anybody who knows how hard that is is, is impressed. So that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at, though. Um, our old friend one, yeah, exactly one five. Yeah, exactly. That's just, and you go the one. Same progression, but I, I instead of doing a five chord, I did a five with the the, the uh, third and the bass. Yeah, exactly, Pink. Um, the the the. Um, hey, Joseph's back. I I like the raking of the back fingers. Oh, that yeah the. Be careful because I need my nails this week. Probably should start putting some strengthener on her. Um, I need my nails for think for for. Um... Yeah, so I kind of try to keep my nails. My, th my thumbnail's messed up, so I really don't have much of a thumbnail. Well, that's pretty. Silent Night. I did a lesson on it, I think. I think you can, if you look up Silent Night, you can see I did a lesson on it. Public Domain. So that one I don't mind doing because I can't get, not going to snag me for, um, for doing that. I should probably record it. What chords are the best of all? 
Well, I, you know, I would start with E minor, C, G, and D, the ones I've been using to kind of demonstrate. And I've only done one chord today for the chord embellishments, fills, and riffs. We're only talking about one chord. But, um, yeah, start with those because, you know, if you have to, if the song's in B flat, you can just go here to capo at the third fret, play the same chords, and that the song's in C, you can just go up to here to the, or B, let's say B, go there. Yeah, so, um, but are they the best chords? No, but but it, they're a good starting, a good building block. Start with those chords and then go from there. Um, and it, each one of those chords, E minor is probably the easiest. G is not too hard. Some people have a hard time with C, and some people have a hard time with D. You know, so each of them have different um, different shapes that kind of allow that teach your fingers something with each one of those chord shapes. Teach your fingers something, and then. You know, when you, when you need to start learning the jazz chords and things like that, you're going to have more dexterity the more chords you know. time is it? Oh, about an hour and a half or an hour and 20. Let's see, what, how, when did I start? Uh, where's the time again? Thanks for the coin though, by the way. Uh, um, always appreciate it. Oh, here it is. There's, oh, we can, can never find that. The one, one, one hour and 17. All right, here, here we are. All right. So um, we can talk about A minor chord now. The A minor shape, uh, which would be the six chord in the key of C, would be the two chord in the key of G, be the three chord in the key of F. Um, so we would approach it differently if we were in the key of F. But we can do some of the same. But I like A minor, so top five strings, open A, then second fret, second fret, first fret, open. <laughs> Stop, yeah. I put I put Chris to sleep. Um, so one thing you can you can see in this A minor chord is that if you take off your hands, all those notes are good. So if we want to. Practice hammering on every one of those notes. The, the fourth string note, the third string note, and the second string note. That's not a bad thing to be too. Also pull off and stay off of them too. You, you know, maybe not, not so much that one, but totally fine there. Um, to take the third finger off and open up that G string. And so that becomes an A minor seven. So this is A minor. You take off that third finger and play open two, open one, open. That's A minor seven. And then 
then if you go to the Turn those six notes into a lick. That open D string, the second fret D string, open G string, second fret G string, open B string, and sec first fret B string. So you have but again, if you got a little sloppier. I'm in the key of C, by the way. So when I'm playing this A minor chord, so I'm thinking it's a kind of the sixth chord. Um, so in the, the to do the same progression we did before. I might be doing that. Yeah, you know, that's so that's the six, four, one, five. Or I could think of it because that progression. Uh, who? Who said that progression earlier? Uh, one, four, five, six, four. So many, many songs use that chord progression. So if you're, you know. by Paco Bell. Canon and C by Paco Bell. Uh, I didn't have a plan. And I was going to get out of that riff. To that we can see. we can slide up to that E. Maybe play that with me here. We got A minor, play an A minor chord. You can go up and with your third finger, maybe play the the E on the second string and that open open first string, and go down two frets with your third finger, and then go to your first finger on the C and then hit like that. Skill over this, we could do. We could visualize the pentatonic. Um, it would be pentatonic number four, um, and play play open A, and then third fret, open D, second fret, open G, second fret, first fret, third fret. So not open the B string. The B note's fine, but it's not part of this pentatonic. And then open E, third fret, and you might want to go. Visualize that note up there because that's an A note, so that may come in handy. Tonic scale. Oops. Merry Christmas. 
Christmas, Wendy. Yeah, I won't see y'all before Christmas. I might see you Christmas Day. But like I said, all those open string notes are good over A minor. Stay more pentatonic. You can avoid that B note, the open B string. And that that works over A minor. Uh, some A minor chords, like I said, A minor seven, open two, open one, open. Or I could play A minor seven this way, play A minor and add the pinky on the top. That's more difficult, but it's a cool voicing. Uh, that's used in. Uh, uh, and Angie. Right? Um, does something like that. And I'm very always tempted to do that kind of riff over an A minor chord, you know. Add that seventh, add that fourth. So if I take off my first finger. That's an A2, but there's no third in there. So I could call that A minor two or A major two. It doesn't really matter. There's no third. If I wanted to play it with a third, you're probably gonna have to do something like this. Open, two, four, one, open. But there's a cheetah one. If you go open, seven, five, open, open. to go to grab a, a nice substitution for that basic A minor chord. You add your pinky here, it, it's like an A sus, but again, no third. A sus, it doesn't have a third, so you can call it. Normally we hear it go into the A major. But like instead of anticipation, we could call it dread. <laughs> So I need a four-syllable word for dread. <laughs> dread, 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 dread. Oh, anticipation. Oh, five-syllable. Holy cow. That word's got a lot of syllables in it. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh, let's see. Yes, 112,000 subs, yeah. It grows a little bit. It's you know I'm never gonna get to a million. I know that. That's just not gonna happen. I'm not. I'm not that dedicated of a YouTuber to take it to a million. My my videos aren't that pretty. <laughs> and I feel like Rick Beato, who's what now two million, over two million. He um, he definitely did. He he his approach was more about music and songs and uh, like where he got really big was doing those what makes a song great kind of thing. And I don't know that he could even monetize those because he's literally playing the songs on his thing, but um, monetizing and having takedowns is a two different things, you know. So they still monetize him, but the artist gets the money or the writers get the money. He doesn't necessarily make money on his YouTube videos, but... Um, I mean, I'm sure he makes money because now he's doing more videos where he's just talking and, and not necessarily playing music. Or if he's doing a guitar lesson, that he can he can do. Um, there might be a limit, like if you don't play more than five seconds of a song or something like that, then they can't really claim that you're using the song. Um, as they say in England, happy Christmas. Yes, uh, four fingers for E7, you could totally do that. Um, um, so it's a, for the A minor seven. Yep, exactly. You just move it to every that A minor seven with a four finger A minor seven. You move it down one string each lower. You get an E seven chord, which would be a nice chord to go to. But uh, A minor seven has a G in it, and E seven has a G sharp in it. So it's kind of weird. I, I wouldn't necessarily go back and forth between those two chords. I might go E minor E seven to A minor, but not add the seven to that A minor because you know, you want it. You want that G sharp to be that really strong tone you don't want to you want to water it down by putting G's in your a minor chord um, but 
you can. It's not a rule. It's just an observation. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Beato, you know, he's, and then when he does his live stream, he'll get, <laughs> I mean, for a while there, he was getting a lot of money. When he first was starting to do live streams, he, man, people were giving 50 bucks, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. I just see so much money up there. I'm like, wow, yeah, why wouldn't he do a live stream like all day long? Like those lawyer live streams, they're just making bank when they do. They make more money doing that than being a lawyer, which, which is saying something. <clears throat> Although most lawyers are out of work. Um, yes, happy Christmas, Pink Elephant. Um, but, uh, yeah, so getting get to a million, I would have to really, really dedicate. And I think the older I get, too, the, the, the smaller my uh, base is. Like, you know, 20-year-old kids aren't going to turn me on and go, oh, yeah, that guy knows something about guitar. <laughs> They're going to go, yeah, no, I want this kid that has the crazy hair and the cool ear nose ring and the tattoo on the face to, to be my, you know, guitar teacher or whatever. So, um, uh, yes, okay, that's a great question, Pink. So, like I told you before, um, and we didn't talk about the E minor, um, if we're if if that A minor is the two chord in the key of G, then the F sharp works. Um, also, if it's yeah, and that's it. Only if it's your if it's if we're in the key of G, but doesn't mean you can't use it in the key of C. But it's going to sound kind of weird. So like if we're doing um, oh what's that pop progression you do? Actually, I like that. Maybe I would write a song like that, but that note, that F sharp, so what I'm doing, I'm playing A minor and I'm adding the second fret here. How do I do this? I can't, I can't. There we go. Second fret with my pinky on the top string. Okay. You know, if we were to do like. James Bond so so instead of the F sharp I'm adding the F there and that technically be more in the keys but I don't you know just I don't really use that sixth very often the sixth tone one two three four five six in A minor uh, in, in that context but you know like we were doing the E See, that would work if you were in the key of Jazz up uh, the root chord so often uses the major seventh, but what is the melodic relationship to jazz vocals? Um, who said where? Who said that? Simon, where is Simon's? Where is that whole question? Thank you, Bruce, for pointing that out. Totally missed that. Dang, Simon, are you still here? What? How long ago was that comment? I'm not seeing it. Boom, boom, boom. That's weird. Bruce, how far back does this that comment go? If I didn't answer this question sooner, it probably is long gone. But oh, there it is! Wow, that is way back there. I'm so sorry, Simon. Simon, if you're still with us, um, yeah, it's true. There's a lot of. Um, uh, in fact, I'm, you know, I'll use it. Yeah, the. The major seventh works great, and the, and the minor sevenths work great. The dominant sevenths don't usually sound as good, so usually. Um, so you can. So let's say <clears throat> our progression is C. G, A minor, F. You can make this the F chord and the C major chord, both the one and the four chord can, can be major seventh chords. Um, 
So if that's our progression, and then the G, that's the tough one because you go to the G7 and it just, it goes bluesy, it goes rock, it goes country, it goes kind of old timey sounding gospel, old time gospel sound. So the seventh is not, the dominant seventh chord is not often played. You do, like a lot of times they'll do just a, a sus chord, like a G sus or something, if we're in the key of C, for example. So you might hear something like, But yeah. Right. But if the song were, I mean, you pointed out that indeed the major seventh chord does appear a lot in pop songs right now. The major seventh chord would be naturally occurring in the one and the four chord. But if it didn't have that, you could add that if you wanted to jazz up a pop tune. But more often than that, you're going to want to do um, some like two five one subs. So let's say you're playing. G. I'm trying to think of how to do it. So what would be the two five one? You know, you might want to try. something like that or now in the jazz context dominant seventh chords are totally fine um, Simple flat five, but that can be also thought of as a G9 chord. So we're kind of playing a G9 chord. So, so, when, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a two five one turnaround to that A minor chord. Okay, so it's like whatever melody works. In, Yeah, you can kind of, hey, Papa, what's going on? Um, <laughs> great teacher. Thank you. I am a great teacher. <laughs> um, anyway, but the, yeah, so, you know, if you're going to jazz up a song, you just, you try stuff and you go, yeah, that what doesn't work. It, it's got to work with a melody. So if it works with a melody, then okay, cool. You know, um, You could totally, you know, if you, you know, if you're gonna play a song in a jazz club, you don't necessarily want to play the standard chords progressions on a pop song, which are so simple, and the only thing that's gonna make it sound jazzy is the brushes on the drums. <laughs> so yeah, using chord substitutions, finding those those ones that work, and usually, like I said, usually inserting two five one, sometimes turning two chords where there was only one chord, like I did there. I went. C major seven, and then instead of going to G, I went to B minor seven flat five to E seven to A minor seven, and then set that pretty well set up. And I could go, I could go back to the E seven if I wanted to set up this. Or I could go.
don't know. It's, it's, I'd have to sit down and I'd have to have a song to begin with to, to, that I wanted to, to arrange for a jazz thing. Um, you can go kind of crazy with that. Oh, all of a sudden I got blurry. Come on, focus on the hand. Now come away. There we go. I'm kind of learning this camera. Now it looks tilted. Is it, do, does my world look tilted to you? What a mess my office is. Holy cow. You can see the heating pad on my chair back there. I turned that on. And, okay, well, let me see if that's, yeah, sorry, I got, um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, it hasn't put anything in it yet. All right. I guess that's, I got a busy couple weeks ahead of me, so it's, it's uh, good. I'm not complaining. Um, but uh, typical kind of year-end stuff, I, normally the, this, this couple weeks is really slow, but kind of the opposite's happened. So I kind of wish some of this work had happened maybe last month when it was, it was November was fairly slow. I did a lot of writing. Like I said, one trick I've learned in this business, if I'm not working for somebody, I'm working for myself. So always trying to create a little off axis. Okay. See, cause this other screen is touching the camera. So if I move the camera over a little bit this way, then I could do that. Is that better? I can't tell. It looks a little off to me, but because um, I have two screens now, so I try to put it on both the screens, but the screens are kind of like not quite lining up on my desk properly, so I can't really. I was like, it's not it's not strong enough clip to to actually clip them together. I should probably like do something to to fuse these two string screens together so that they are perfect in alignment, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm just working. Usually I'm kind of, the cool thing is I got, you know, I'll have like logic there. I'm getting used to it now. At first it was like, oh man, I got to look around so much. But I have like, I'll have my main logic window here. But over here I'll have on this screen, I'll have my metronome so I can adjust the volume of the metronome. I'll have a tuner. I'll have the big readout for the bar marker so I can go, okay, I'm at bar 42. So I can see that out of the corner of my eye because when I'm doing acoustic stuff, I'm here usually like this. And then um, uh, take a sip, I change guitars. Like, turn like this, so kind of out of my corner of my eye, I'll have the music here, and out of the corner of my eye, I can see the, the bar markers go by, I can see the um, the tuning. That's really handy if I'm playing a fretless instrument where I've got to kind of adjust my tuning as I go. If I'm playing slide or something, I'm, if I'm playing electric, I'm facing the screens. So, you, you know, basically when I'm playing electric, I'm playing, again, take another sip. Um, then I'm going to be facing the, the screens. It doesn't really matter because the speakers are here. But if I'm using, if I'm recording acoustically, I'm using my ears. So it doesn't, doesn't matter where I face. I'm going to hear the same sound. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off. I gotta I gotta do like I said. I got a meeting I gotta do, and then I've got a songwriting session I've gotta get started at some point. Um, hopefully, I got enough to work on some ideas, some things to do. We'll talk about, you know, some other minor chords next week. I may do some more on A minor too. I don't know. I, I, I can give you some more voicings that we can use. Indeed, Gypsy Jazz. I'm working on a project with Alex in Gypsy Jazz, but I can't talk about it yet. Um, once we're deep into it, I can probably talk about it, but I'll keep you posted. Um, yeah, viewer age. Let's see what my viewer age demographics are. Yeah, it's like, Eight per, well, it's not bad. Eight percent or seventeen to or eighteen to twenty-four. That's pretty cool. Point one percent or thirteen to seventeen. <laughs> thirteen percent twenty-five to thirty-four. Thirteen percent uh, thirty-five to forty-four. Seventeen percent forty-five to fifty-four. Twenty-two percent fifty-five to sixty-four. And twenty-five percent of my viewers are over sixty-five. And that that's all from that because of that one video isn't that amazing gender well that's almost always 
Oh, I'm thir it's up to 13%. Usually it's about 10, 90, 10. So I guess get, getting a haircut and actually looking in the mirror before I go live helps with the female audience. <laughs> date. What does that mean? Views by date. Oh, I see. Oh, I can break it up. I see. Okay. Revenue source. Wow. Well, thank you for giving giving me coin. That gives me revenue source. Also, the, the ads. I don't know. What's this yellow? YouTube premium revenue. Oh, see, that's really low. 57 cents, 39 cents, 30 cents. That's, yeah, so not too many people do premium. Mostly it's ads. So, I don't know. Usually I around this Christmas time I see a bump in my viewer count, but we're not getting it right now. So it's actually gone down a little bit, not much. Traffic source, uh, YouTube search, suggested videos, browse feature, external, this is 5%. Okay, and I appreciate that. When you guys post my videos up on your social media and things like that, that that's always appreciated. Um, browse feature bumped weird was number one. Normally, it's a kind of a battle between YouTube search and suggested videos is usually right in there. So thank you, YouTube, for suggesting my videos. Um, very few pl playlist ones, and then... Uh, yeah, occasionally the browse feature j jumps up. So, our little Guthrie from Alice's Restaurant video doing a plethora of jingles, mixing styles and taking... Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I've seen that. All right. So, I'm going to head out. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, let's see. Jay, thank you, Jay. Great lesson. Thank you. Okay, Pink. Christopher. Uh, bye, Catherine. Bye, Bruce. Thank you for Bruce. Bruce and, and wait, did we not have Holly? Did, Holly says she wasn't going to be here, right? I think she said that last week. Dennis is here, though. Yeah, we didn't really have too much too much to moderate, did we, Bruce? But you did your uh, you did all your work of, of keeping keeping me focused on the questions and things, and also the of letting people know about the the schedule and all that. I appreciate that. Who put it? Who who put the envelope at the bottom of the half ton of garbage? Is it on my screen somewhere? Is there an envelope? Yeah. So, yeah, the heating pad's great. If I get the my lower back, which is always sore, you know, if I can get my my lower back uh, uh, warm, yeah, no story time. I probably sold a story somewhere in there. Short story. Um, if I can get my lower back warm, the rest of me is pretty warm. So. I don't know. Some people, I mean, you know, a lot of times people in offices will have a heater on their feet, you know, down it by their feet. And if their feet are warm or their legs, lower legs are warm, the rest of the body's pretty warm. So Beth and I have still been cold plunging. So that's an interesting. What happened to story time? I ran out of stories. <laughs> I just plum ran out of stories. I started to recycle stories and people said, you've already told that one. I'm like, okay, I'm done. So, uh, you know, I need to do a video on that seven string. That'd be kind of fun. Um, anyway, I will talk to you later. I uh, hope you're doing well. I may see, I won't see you next Monday. I don't think, um, I may, but I'm pretty sure I've got like pretty, pretty booked and I, I kind of need to make sure that I don't over, um, work because you know, it'll just wear me out. I don't want to get sick. Um, I woke up this morning feeling like, woof, I think it was allergies or something, but I feel better now. Um, coffee always helps. Uh, I don't think I got enough sleep. So, um, uh, so um, anyway, that's that's what we're doing today. And I'm getting texts right now from work stuff. So, I gotta I gotta sign out. Hope you had a hope you're having.